Okay, chapter four. Chapter four about discrete probability distribution. And discrete means a countable number, guys, like a number of people. Any number that is a whole number that can't be a decimal. And so that's what we call a discrete number. A continuous variable, guys, is a number that uh, not discrete. Continuous is not countable. Anything that you have to use a measuring tool to get is not discrete, is continuous. And anything that you can count on your fingers, one, two, three, four, five, six, is discrete. Chapter four is only about discrete random variables. Number of people, number of students, number of chairs. Like you can't have two and a half chairs. But the uh, amount of sugar, yes, you can have 1.5 pounds, you can have 1.56 pounds, 1.7 decimal, then it's not, uh, that's not discrete. Um, your weight is not discrete because your weight could be anywhere, like let's say uh, someone can be 123.3 pounds, it's a decimal. And in order to get your weight, you know, just you have to go up on a scale, you know, to measure uh your weight so then you're using a tool when you use a tool uh we don't have uh discrete uh, variable temperature is not discrete is continuous so discrete is just keep it in mind is very much you know just a whole number it's something that you can count one two three four could be zero as well like uh, i said on monday the number of students present in my class at any time it could be zero it could be one it could be two three all the way to 29 students so that is what we call discrete so we went over this guys explain what discrete is and then i gave you a frequency distribution table uh, table like this and i showed you how to get the probability out of this here there were 150 employees and they were given scores from one to five on a passive aggressive traits you know that's a test uh, inventory test for passive aggressive traits and uh, one meant extremely passive and five means extremely aggressive and we got the results and then i asked you on monday to find the probability of selecting an employee who scored the one since I have 24 employees and I divide that by the grand total, which is 150, and that's what we call the probability. So the probability, guys, is a relative frequency. That's how we define the, uh, uh, the uh, statistical probability, the frequency of the event divided by the grand total. And we got all of this. We put them in the table right there. For x equals one, the probability is 24 over 150, which is 0 0.16, and we got all those results. This table, guys, is called the probability distribution table. Now, in order to verify if a table is a probability distribution table, there are two conditions you have to verify. You have to verify that each probability is between zero and one, and these are, and you have to verify that the sum of all the probabilities is exactly one. So if you see a question on your quiz or homework and it turns out to be 0 0.99, you say no, because it has to be exactly one. That's not an example of probability distribution. And then guys, we talked about the mean of the probability distribution. And I gave you the formula for the mean which is the sum of x p x. I will provide those formulas when you need them on, on the test. And uh, to find the mean, this is what we did. That was the last thing we did, guys. So the mean, the average of the probability distribution. For example, you ask yourself, which value occurs very much most often here on average? What we think the average here? One has a weight of 6.16. Two has a weight of 0 0.22. Three has a weight of 0 0.28. Look, the weight of three is, is the highest here. So I would say probably the average is gonna be close to three. And how do you do the average? You just take the X and multiply it by the probability. Then the two multiply by the probability, the three multiply by probability and add them up because that's what the summation notation means. 
and we got 2.94, which is very close to what we suspect, you know, the average to be. Look, we got 2.94 uh, in here. Now, guys, the good news is I'm going to show you how to find the mean using your calculator. So let's say one of the questions you're going to do in section 4.1, you have this. You have the X, and if you have your calculator handy, get it out. And let's see what we have here. So I got the X value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The probability 0. Point, they should add up to 1. So I have 11, 37 is 48. 58, 66, 67. So what's left for 4, 0 0.24? And the question is to find the mean. And he just wants the answer. He doesn't want the work. So one way to do it, guys, is to do 0, point, uh, 0 times 0 0.11 plus 1 times 0 0.37 plus 2 times 0 0.18 plus 3 times 0 0.10 plus 4 times 0 0.24. And you get the answer. But if you like a way to do it on the calculator, so let's do that. First of all, guys, you have to enter the data into the calculator. And since I have two rows of data, X and PX, so then you're going to put your data in L1 and L2. Please pay attention to uh, this. That's going to be very helpful uh, in a few minutes. So I'm going to put the data into the calculator. So you go to stat, edit. Okay, clear. I'm going to clear this list right here. And I put zero, one, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to put 0 0.11, 0 0.37. 0 0.18, 0 0.10, and 0 0.24. Okay, I'm going to quit. I'm ready now to show you the mean. You go to stat. Watch, guys. Calc. One variable statistic. If I do nothing and hit calculate, guys, what will happen here? I just scroll down. That's a wrong answer. You know what the calculator did? It took 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, add them up and divide by 5. And if you don't believe that, let's try it. 0 plus 1 is 1, plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. This is the mean X bar, it gave me two. That's not what I want. I want the calculator guys to do zero times 0 0.1 plus one times 0 0.37 plus two times 0 0.18 plus three times 0 0.10 plus four times 0 0.20. So I'm gonna go back and go to the screen one more time and see if a student can tell me what to do on this screen before I move on. Any suggestion, guys? So the calculator is asking me for the L2. Yes, the frequency has to be in L2. You have to tell the calculator that I'm not using only one list. I'm using the two lists combined. And once you tell the calculator the frequency is in L2, the calculator knows what to do when it finds you know the mean. So look. Oops, sorry. Stat, calc, one variable statistic, second, and number two. And watch. X bar is 1.99. This is the actual mean. And if you want me to check, guys, let's let's check by hand. So it's going to be 0 times 0 0.11 plus one, it should be the exact answer. 
Now, maybe some of you will say we got two from the previous one. It just happened by accident that the two answers are close, but it's not always the case. Okay, what would that be? Let's do it. So I got 0 0.37. plus two times 0 0.18 plus three times 0 0.10 plus four times 0 0.24. And here you go, guys, watch, this is the answer, 1.99. Now, if some of you have the older calculator, Let's say you do, you try to do you put the data in L1 and L2 and you get stat calc one variable statistics you don't get this screen, this is what you see. And let me tell you what to do. You just see this screen. In chapter two I just told you you press enter and then you get the mean and the standard deviation look what you have to do in this. Here we have to tell the calculator that I'm not using only L1, I'm using L1 and L2. So you press the second key and then you put number one. Then you put a comma and then you press the second key and you put number two. And then you go and press enter and it will give you the same results. So if you have a TI-84 with an older operating system, and it only shows one variable stats, just press the second key and then number one, that's gonna show you L1 to get L1 here. And then you'll get L2, okay? Now, how do we find the standard deviation of the discrete probability distribution? There is a formula guys, but I'm not going to have you use the formula to do that. I mean, the formula for the mean, as you can see, it's easy. But for the standard deviation, it's a little bit complicated. That's why I'm going to require that you use technology here to find the standard deviation of the probability distribution, the discrete probability distribution. And let me show you how to do it. We already done it, but I didn't talk about it. So I'm going to clear. And let me show you how to do the standard deviation. You put your data in L1 and L2, X and PX. We already done that. You go to stat, calc, one variable is statistic. Your X list is always L1 and your P probability list is always L2. And this is calculate. And watch guys, you already have the standard deviation. It's already there, sigma. No S, no sample here. It's an entire probability distribution. So the uh, uh, standard deviation of the probability distribution is 1.367. You can see it on the screen, guys. And that's how you find this. Uh, one point, let's say you want to do two decimal places. This is called uh, standard deviation of probability distribution. Now, what about if he asks you to find the variance? The variance is the square. So the variance of the discrete probability distribution is sigma square. So variance is called sigma square. You just take the 1.37 guys and square it. Calculator is not gonna give you sigma square. It's gonna give you sigma as you notice. So you just square it, square this answer. So if I quit 1.37 and then square it, I get 1.88. And you notice guys that I put some hints on how to use the calculator uh, in here. All the direction and how to use a calculator are listed there so you can follow them, but I just did a demo and how to do it. So the bottom line, X values go to L1, P values, the probability values go in L2 and you run one variable statistics on L1 and L2, you should get all those answers. 
The last thing, guys, we're going to do, uh, and which is really interesting, it's an application uh, uh, of what we learned. It's called the expected value of a discrete random variable. If they ask you to find the expected value while learning section 4.1, it's the same thing as finding the mean of the probability distribution, which is sum of x, px. But it has a different label. We call it e of x. And let me tell you what we mean by the expected value through a nice, really, example. OK. Um, let's say people who go to Vegas, you know, just to gamble. So they put money into the machine, and they hope, you know, just that they would win uh, they will get, you know, just more money in return. What they're hoping for is called the expected value of uh, the expected value. Usually the expected value when people use, you know, just like a gambling machine is going to be negative because it's not going to work in the favor of the player. It's always going to be negative and the chance that the likelihood is the person is going to lose. Because if the expected value of a win is always a positive, that means the person, every time he or she plays, they're going to get money. And that doesn't work this way, because otherwise they will go out of business. So they built the machine so that, you know, just the expected value is always negative. And that's, you're going to see an example. Anything that you uh, anything that you play, you know, just you pay money for, you should be be expecting the expected value to be uh, a negative. If the expected value was a positive, everyone will go to Vegas and camp, gamble. And every every time, you know, just they gamble, they're gonna win money. That doesn't work. So I'm gonna give you an example uh, of how to calculate the expected value and what does it mean and how you interpret that. Remember, I said the expected value is the same as, as the mean. So it's not going to be any different. And we can use the calculator to find it. So let me walk you through this example. A raffle, a raffle ticket. At a raffle, 1,500 tickets are sold at $2 each. And there are four prizes. So guys, remember, there are four uh, tickets that are winning tickets. One will win 500. One, you get 250, one, 150, and 175. You buy one ticket. What is the expected value that you're going to gain money? Do you think, guys, it is very, very likely that you're going to walk out of some money when you spend $2? No, the likelihood that you're going to lose. And I'm going to show you how that works. OK. We're going to construct the probability distribution, first of all. Gain or loss here. It's the money that you uh, pay or you win. And here we're going to find the probability of each one. OK, guys, when you, you spend $2, so the first value of x is a $2. But I'm not going to put a plus 2 here. I'm going to put a minus 2. Can someone tell me why a minus 2? Because you're paying it? Yeah. The negative 2, guys, it's not a gain. It's a loss. Once you pay for the ticket, that's not your money anymore. That's the money that you lost. It's negative two. What's the probability of losing, guys? There are 1,500 tickets, and there are four tickets that are winning. So your denominator is going to be 1,500 here. Definition of probability. What's the pro what, what are the number of tickets that are going to be losing tickets, not winning tickets? 1,496. Do you guys agree with what she said? 1,496, that is correct, because there are only four uh, tickets that are winning. The rest of them are losing tickets, so your chance of losing is very high. 1,496 divided by 1,500. OK, now let's go to the good news. Gain money. OK, how much would you gain? What do I put here now? So it is possible that you lose the $2, but there is a small chance that you would win. 
if if you win the 500 how much would you gain guys gain yeah get extra money 498 498 and let me tell you why guys it's 498 because you already paid two dollars so you'll get your two dollars back gain means a profit it's so uh you you get your two dollars back and then actually you won you gained 498 because they're gonna give you 500 dollar bill you already paid two dollars you're taking it back so actually what you actually gained was 498 and guys, there's only one ticket that wins 500. So your chance is one over 1500. Now, let's go to the price of 250. It's gonna be the same scenario, guys. You you win 250, you pay $2, so you get it. You, out of the 250, you got your $2 back. So actually you, you gain 248. And there's only one ticket. Then we have 150, it's gonna be 148. And we have only one winning ticket. And finally guys, $75, you'll get back 73 and it's one over 1500. Okay, we can do this on the calculator or we can find the expected value guys by hand. I mean, it's not hard to find it by hand, let's find it. So negative two times, 1496 divided by 1500 plus this number times that number 498 times 1 over 1500 plus 248 times 1 over 1500 plus 148 times 1 over 1500 and I got two one more plus 73 times one over 1500. And let me show you how to do the calculations here. Okay, so this is what I would do guys. So I just do negative two and remember the negative sign is right here, right here. That's a negative sign, don't forget it. So you put negative two times instead guys of dividing by 500 500 500 everywhere i'm just going to do the numerators and once i'm done i divide by 500 times 1496 plus 498 times one is just 498 plus 248 plus 148 plus 73 equals now i'm going to divide by 1500 guys and i got this you got a negative answer what does it mean does anyone know have an interpretation for someone who doesn't know statistics they want to play, you know, just a game and you tell them your expected value is uh, uh, and the game costs $2 to play and their expected value is negative $1.35. What would you tell that person? What does that mean in words? Does anyone have an interpretation? What does that mean? You're expected to lose. You're expected to lose. One dollar and thirty-five cents for. Can you continue? For every two dollars spent. Exactly for every ticket you buy. You are expected to lose one dollar and thirty-five cents for each ticket you buy. That's exactly what one negative 135 means. Now, maybe a students will ask, why not lose $2? Well, guys, there are four prizes. So your chance is not zero that you win. There is a chance that you would win. That's why it's not a $2 loss. Good. And average, the more you keep playing, that's what your average is going to be. And that's what we call. But the average, guys, is a loss. 
every single machine that's built in Las Vegas is built on the fact that the expected value is negative. There is no machine even that has an expected value zero. Do you guys know what uh, uh, zero means? That you have 50-50 chance percent, uh, the chance of losing or winning. So it won't work this way. All right, any questions? All right, so...